Hello all, good morning, good evening or good afternoon based on wherever you are. So continuing our yesterday discussion where you started talking about the preview release of Business Central 2024 wave one. So let's do a quick recap in the yesterday session. We talked about how you can set up these <coughs> preview environments, how easy it is to set them up, what you need to kind of keep in mind while creating these preview environment, what you can and cannot do into these preview environment. If you haven't watched it, go back to this playlist. There's a video about that where we talked about it. But during the end of that video, we did a comparison of extension between Business Central 23 and 24, if you remember. And we came up with this list where we saw that the image analyzer uh, seems to be not available on the preview version. Hopefully it comes back into the actual release or maybe there is no plan for it. We'll figure it out with the general availability. But surprisingly, we saw some new extension there called Business Central Found Business Foundation, BC Excel Report, Sustainability and Sustainability uh, data, demo data set. Today we'll be talking about the business foundation extension because that kept me a little bit woken up throughout the night while I was trying to figure it out what that means. So let's go back to the general available product today, which is Business Central 23. So if you remember in Business Central 23, Microsoft, if I'm not wrong, introduced namespaces. Now, if you have watched the last year release videos, you have noticed that in Business Central 23, and let me go back into my VS Code, open an extension, there was a feature which is already released in the past called AL Explorer. Now, AL Explorer was a way to kind of mimicking the object designer in Dynamic Snap. With the AL Explorer, after the last release, there was a new option added called Group By. And the new option that was added was Namespaces. So what Microsoft started doing with the namespaces is started grouping objects which support the similar functionality into a particular namespace. So when you expand the namespace called Microsoft, you'll see that there are different namespaces and there are some which are not in namespaces. We'll come to that later. And inside the Microsoft namespaces, you see all these different groups called inventory, finance, role center, and so on and so forth. There's one specific namespace which is foundation. Now the idea of the foundation namespace is anything that is shared across multiple uh, areas that are supported in the business center. Like you have addresses on your customers and vendors and uh, you know employees and, and other entities. So it's a common thing that's being shared across different areas of the product in the same way. All these features that you see are kind of shared between the different areas where Business Central allows you to help your business. So if you look at it here, there's number series, the whole module of all the number series are placed into it. And the way Microsoft is grouping them is when you go inside any of these objects, you'll notice on the top there's a namespace listed. Now, Microsoft have already splitted their uh, NAV code more or less into the application layer which majorly contains nothing we'll talk about it why and then uh, there is the system which contain all your system objects all your two million objects if I'm not wrong they all are part of it and then there is a system application which contain a library of features which are kind of logically grouped again shared across environment but they are related to the system. Now, Microsoft was thinking to re-break the base application into logical pieces. So they introduced namespaces where they started grouping and clubbing objects based on the area where they impact the system. So I'm hoping that's what the new extension that we are going to talk about today brings up in Business Central 2024 release wave one. So that was a quick recap and a pre-info before we start doing this. So what we are going to do, we are going to start our VS code and create a new extension and connect it to our this preview environment. So how we do that, let's go ahead and do a 
AL go. In the AL go, oh, there's a problem. Before you do that, because when you build an extension, there's a dependency of the a property here. And let me show it to you, which is called the application. Now the application property or specifically the runtime property tells you which version it supports. So like 2012.1 is a specific to a version. So if I remove this and do this, you'll see these different versions, which is starts from 3.0, which is for, uh, it is not showing here. It is for BC 14, if I'm not wrong. So if you hover over it, it should tell you that it is for business central spring release. And in the same way, as the versions are being released, the runtime is keeps on increasing from three to different versions, nine, 10, 11, and 12, right? The 12 is specifically for Business Central 2023 release wave two. I had 12.1 uh, because there was a feature which was released in 2023 release wave two, cumulative update one, and that's why I was able to use the runtime property of 12.1 but now I have to do one for the 2024 release wave one which comes with a runtime of 13.0 but that works based on the extension that you have installed here for AL language now when the actual product is released and we have talked about it into the previous video what you can see is in your uh, installation component and this is for only on-prem what you can do is inside your installation that you have done for business central in this path you find a vsix file called a language vsix file now this vsix file allows you to work on this version which you have installed which in this case 230 and lower and you can deploy it by using this option called install from VSIX. What this will do, this VSIX file will bring this extension respective to that version, but not to the future version. In the last release, if I'm not wrong, or the previous releases, Microsoft allowed you to go to a pre-release version, which means you can also get the extension available for the future versions which will be available in the future as general availability so if i'm going to work on business central 24 release wave one preview which is still in preview i'll have to switch this to preview release when i get into it it installs a new extension and then you need to reload this environment and once you do that now you are able to create extension where you can select runtime higher than the GA versions or the general available versions of the product. Hopefully that's clear. Let's move ahead and do a AL go. I'll call it as, uh, okay. Uh, okay, 2024, R1V1, just the name. Now if you see, now you can choose the target platform of 13 and 14. So in the pre-release of it, you can even do uh, extension development for 2024 release wave two, which is still have no news, but people or the partners who are part of the ready to go program will have access to the uh, release that is Microsoft working on right now. Currently we are targeting for 13.0. So as soon as I choose 13.0, I'll build my extension and it'll load some files now it's asking me from where you want to download the symbols so i say cloud sandbox and then i would like to stop this if it doesn't go there okay let me reload this so it doesn't go to my bc23 and download something because my environment name is bc24 preview so i'll have to change that on my launch.json here bc24 preview and now, because I may not be connected to this environment, I'll do my clear credential cache so that anything that passwords are, that are saved here kind of will be removed. And then I can do a download symbol. Now remember this, 
in the bus when you are doing extension development you see the system app the base app and the application app automatically get downloaded based on a property here called the application version now in this case this is set to 24.0 in your case of GA, it will be 23.0. And based on this property, it downloads some set of prerequisite uh, extensions or dependencies from it. So let me download symbols. So when I do a download symbol, it surely ask me to log in now. And I'll log in here. Let's paste my code. Let's do a next. And that should verify that the download has been done okay done i can minimize this and let's wait now what comes up into the al package the al package should download anything which is listed as a dependency on the application extension so we see the application extension we see the system extension we see the system application extension and the base is being downloaded right now but at the same time, if you notice, we also see a business foundation extension. So this is the new extension, which will get downloaded when you start downloading symbols going forward with the general availability of business and 24. Now, if you don't know how system automatically does that, let drop a comment and we'll talk about it. But that's not a topic for today. So let's wait for the base application and then we'll see what is available inside all these extensions, especially the business foundation extension. So with this, what Microsoft is doing and which is great and why I'm super excited about it, is trying to base this giant base app into the logical pieces. What are the benefits of it? Your processes, like your upgrades, your installation of the apps, your sync and other processes happens faster if the extension size is smaller and the responsibility of that extension regarding all the operation that you do in your tenant will reduce because the number of objects in that extensions are limited and that becomes very important when you think especially and this is maybe especially for on-prem and also from microsoft perspective to business and the SaaS, your upgrades super easier because now as your base app or one giant app starts reducing its size. Now, if you notice, just to download the base app, it's taking a long, long time, which should not happen. It should kind of quickly come in. But because there are a lot of references inside that object, it takes a quite a while time in all these operations. So with this attempt, what Microsoft is doing is trying to break that app into some logical small apps, which is great. There will be some hiccups here and there, but that makes sense. For a bigger cause, I think we all agree that it makes sense to kind of split that out. While this is happening, let's open AL Explorer and see what comes up into this new extension. So here, I'll... Okay, it's still waiting to, to load. But the idea is once it gets loaded, which it is still loading, so I'll pause it for a while and let it load and then we'll resume the video again okay so it seems the base app is finally downloaded now in al explorer let's try to see what's available in the business foundation okay so in the business foundation uh, we see a little bit of uh, permissions which makes sense and then we see number series objects table code unit pages reports interfaces so everything around number series seems to be splitted from the base app to this particular app, to the new app. And now if I look at the modules or namespaces, it's just one namespace that's coming here called foundation number series. So not everything that we saw in 2 Business Central 23 under the foundation is moved to the foundation app, but the things which are uh, coming in into this, at least in the preview version is only number series. Let's have a look into the number series in the base app now because this is moving between apps what microsoft is doing would be interesting so let's look at table 308 i'll change it to the base app 
and we'll look it into the namespaces of base app called foundation okay so the foundation is still here and am i doing it right let me see let me refresh it once oh because it points to all which i don't want so i'm on base app when i go into the number series i still see 308 here so the 308 is available in the base app as well as into the foundation app which is a little bit confusing right 308 into the business foundation and 308 is also here so what microsoft have done obviously they can't just remove an object from an extension that's not the rule they have marked this particular object in the base app as obsolete so it says that number series is moved to business foundation and the obsolete stage is moved obsolete tag is this and this is a new one maybe i don't remember seeing this but now there is a move to which lists down the extension id where it is moved so now don't be surprised if going forward you will see that the base app is kind of started reducing its size and as we saw in the al explorer there are still elements in the foundation which have not moved to the foundation yet and i'm pretty sure there will be reasons why microsoft did not do it or maybe it's just in the preview in the actual release the whole foundation namespace may move to the business foundation extension now how does that impact you as a developer or uh, as a customer so from a developer perspective it doesn't impact you much because as soon as you will download the symbol the foundation will come by default and you will be able to refer to it easy from the benefit perspective for developers understand it specifically around when you have to update these different apps as the base app size will reduce the time that'll take to kind of deploy publish sync and upgrade the app will start reducing drastically as the size of the app is reducing what is the benefit of it from a development perspective so if going forward you don't need anything from the foundation or maybe you're building an extension that only depends on foundation and does not need any references from base application you might only need dependency to the business foundation which will drastically reduce how the size of the symbols that you're downloading the dependency that you have is only on the business foundation even as of today if i'm building something which is not dependent on a base app i can actually remove this and manually list down dependencies in this area that are which of these apps i need for me to be dependent okay i surely will need the system application for sure because there are things that will help me in doing whatever i'm planning to do or if there is something which only impacts uh, which does not impact base application so i can actually technically live with these three extensions and i'll be done with it because this kind of take care of the platform objects the application one if you look at it no oh sorry the system one contain all your application or platform objects the system application is more or less your core entities which are required for doing certain things and if that's also not needed it's not mandatory if i'm only modifying something which is around number series let's say then the only dependencies that i need to my extension is these two and think of a future where all these extensions are come out of these base app and exist as a separate entity it'll be a great <coughs> way to kind of split logically split the product in a way that it's more usable and you know causes less friction the other benefit of it from a microsoft perspective is it's easier to maintain these apps separately because then you have a scope to extend it or to uh, to add features into it because now you are looking at a smaller set of objects rather than looking at what nav had 6800 something around that objects that many objects versus let's say 20 objects so you have more area to focus on that particular extension and understand and solve the problems that customers or partners may see into the future so let me know what you think about the foundation extension that has been released into the business center 
and is there anything else that you find out uh, good about business Central 24 and we will surely talk about it as we move forward into the series so this series is dedicated to the preview release and we'll try to cover everything that i or you find out from somewhere and we'll talk about it into these uh, into this particular season so let me know your comments into the comment box is there a topic on business central 24 that i should be talking about add it in the comment section if you haven't which i'm pretty sure you guys have if you haven't then please subscribe to the channel and make sure to share this content so that others who are busy on their work get notice about these videos and come back and learn with us as we are learning this see you sooner than later into the next video into the series until then have a great day